Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, LBMTG, and today I'll be bringing you guys 10 cards that I think will maintain their value even after rotation comes this fall. Uh, these cards are all rotating this fall. The sets that will be rotating are Hour of Devastation, Amonkhet, uh, Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, as well as the Welcome Decks, but I don't think that the, uh, that the Welcome Decks will be too big of an issue. Um, in terms of cards that we're looking at kind of speculating on or at least caring about the financial values of them. So uh, these are 10 cards that I believe personally will will maintain their value and have the potential to be uh, some very good speculations in the long run. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first card that I brought up here is Raymond App Excavator. What I really like about Raymond App Excavator is that right now it is fairly cheap at about the $3 mark. You could have picked these up at about the $2 mark here around M25 uh, rather than Vixlon time. There is the potential that they might drop down again a little bit once uh, rotation hits. However, I believe that uh, this is this is the kind of card that uh, has the potential to hold its value long term. We're looking at some deck lists here, and you can see all modern, legacy, and vintage. This is the kind of um, it kind of shows you just how strong this card is. Uh, the fact that the lists that we're seeing here aren't necessarily standard. Standard isn't where it's receiving its monetary value. It is receiving its monetary value in terms of eternal formats like Modern Legacy Vintage. And then, of course, uh, Commander isn't located here, but we can see that uh, Commander, of course, uh, plays a lot of Ram and Ab Excavator if you're in a green deck. Um, then Raymond App Excavator can be great in there. So I think that Raymond App Excavator has the potential to hold long term. Uh, basically, when we look at Raymond App Excavator, you can see you may play land cards from your graveyard. If I go ahead and type in another card here, Crucible of Worlds, uh, we'll go ahead and click on the one from 10th edition, and you can see you may play land cards from your graveyard. Same mana cost, same wording, uh, except one is $72 and the other one is $3 right now. So uh, that kind of goes to show you just how strong this effect truly is. Of course, it's been quite a while since we've seen a Crucible. Crucible of Worlds reprint, so that definitely helps uh, with the value being uh, what it is for Crucible of Worlds, but I think that um, when people are looking for a budget option, I believe uh, that they'll be going for the Ram and App Excavator, um, and I think that there is a lot of potential for Ram and App Excavator's price to continue to kind of grow. You can see it's already starting to, to go up a little bit here uh, since about M25. Um, you can see that it's slowly going up, and notably, something else to point out here, you can see it's $3 here for this paper version. Uh, that is, the, of course, the non-foil, non-promo version, but if we go ahead and look at the promo version that was given away at uh, the release event, uh, this card is about $3 as well, and it's staying around the same price, so I think that there's an opportunity to invest in either the foil version, in either the uh, release event foil versions, or even just the regular uh, pack, just straight up normal versions. Uh, I don't think that I would personally invest in the foil, uh, the pack foil versions. That's just not something that I'm currently looking at uh, in terms of a spec, but I do kind of like this spec um, here on the release event promos. They're the kind of cards where you want to foil out your deck and you want to make it look nice, but at the same time, you'd rather spend $3 compared to $8 uh, in terms of these promos. Um, and again, like I said, the, the value here is coming from Eternal Format, so I think that Ramonap Excavator has quite the potential to hold its value long term. Uh, looking at the second card here, this is kind of a commander speculation is what I'm assuming would uh, end up seeing Mirage Mirror pl get played the most. A lot of times you'll see just random artifacts that are played a lot in Commander uh, managing to hold their value long term and sometimes they'll just spike out of nowhere and become extremely uh, extremely valuable cards and I think Mirage Mirror has the potential to do that. This card uh, fits into any Commander deck because of course it's colorless. Um, notably uh, if you guys watched my video that I made a few days ago where we talked about Dominaria col colorless cards seeing play in Legacy and Vintage notably here we had uh, this vintage list where I said Voltaic Servant was seeing some play. Uh, it also was playing Mirage Mirror, so uh, that's kind of notable, I guess, but uh, I think most of the value that we'll be seeing from Mirage Mirror comes in terms of EDH slash Commander. Again, like I said, uh, this really has the potential because it's an artifact and can fit into any any deck. Um, just has the potential to go up. I see this similar to something like the Dalkin Orrery. Uh, if it wants to show up, Orrery, I think that's how that's spelled. Not even close. All right, close enough, I guess. But maybe that's why I'm typing. It should be Vidalkin, not Vendalkin. Uh, Vidalkin Orrery. There we go. Uh, if we take a look at Vidalkin Orrery here quickly, uh, we'll go ahead and just click the fifth Dawn version. This is the kind of card uh, that used to be essentially 
just very cheap. Um, you could see you could pick these things up around two dollars, three dollars, but because it's a random artifact, it could fit into any commander deck. And then once it started seeing play in commander, then it slowly it has uh, has gone up in price. It's about twenty three dollars right now, and you used to be able to pick these things up for about three dollars. And it wouldn't surprise me if the same thing happens uh, with Mirage Mirror. Um, I'll go ahead and bring up Mirage Mirror once again on the screen. And here we are. So, of course, like I said, it goes into any deck, and so it just has the potential to be similar to a card like Vidalcan Oru, where it just goes up out of nowhere over time because it sees play in a ton of uh, in a ton of commander decks. Uh, the next card we're going to take a look at here is Hollow One. Hollow One is extremely cheap right now at only $2. I think this card should be a lot more expensive than it is. Hollow One right now is the namesake card in one of Modern's best decks. That card being, or er, that deck, of course, being Black Red Hollow One. You can see here, uh, putting up some quite strong results with 5-0 deck lists over here, um, showing up to here towards the side. Uh, and again, it's the namesake card of the deck, Black Red Hollow One, so um, I, it wouldn't surprise me to see Hollow One go up in price over time, especially if this deck maintains its popularity like it is now. Um, it, it definitely wouldn't surprise me to see Hollow One go up and be similar to something like, maybe not necessarily the Blood Gas price, but uh, we could look at something like Flame Wake Phoenix here. Flame Wake Phoenix saw absolutely zero play uh, before before Black Red Hollow One became a thing, and now you can see they're about $3 a card, $12 a play set. Um, and so I think the Hollow One definitely has the potential uh, of doing the same thing, where it, it becomes quite expensive uh, in, in terms of uh, seeing play solely in this deck. It does say that it sees play in, oops, that's not what I wanted. We'll go back to Hollow One here. And then it did say that it sees play in some uh, vintage decks, some other sort of modern decks here as well. Um, some vintage dredge uh, list is what you're seeing here. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Hollow One just continued to go up in price, especially because of its case, and as, especially because of its popularity in the Black Red Hollow One modern deck. Um, I think that's mainly where all of its value is coming from, and I think this is the kind of card that, because it doesn't see a lot of play in standard, uh, standard players would be very willing to trade these away to you for a cheap value, and then you'd be able to hold on to them long term. And then as they go up, as uh, the popularity in uh, Black Red Hollow One continues to remain the same, then I think Hollow one has the potential to become quite a decent speculation and maintain its value over time. Uh, the next card here, this one's kind of obvious. Everyone kind of expects this one to be on the list, Fatal Push. Um, Fatal Push is just an absolutely fantastic card. Uh, one of the financial things that I want to point out here is, of course, it sees play in basically every Eternal format. Uh, you can see there's only one, or I guess there's two standard lists here, so most of its value is coming from Eternal formats, uh, which, again, I said is similar to the Ram and F Excavator and the Mirage Mirror that I kind of like having the Eternal formats being the reason that the card is expensive and not the standard format being the reason that the card is expensive. Uh, so if we look at decks like Check Pile here, you can see I'm assuming a full four. Nope, only two Fatal Push here in this list. Um, but most decks in Modern and in Legacy, as well as occasionally in Vintage, not super often in Vintage, you can see Check Pile here again in, uh, in Vintage here playing some copies of it. But mainly Legacy and Modern is where you're seeing a lot of four of Fatal Pushes in deck lists. And so, of course, I think Fatal Push has the potential to stay uh, where it's at. And so then just two kind of other things that I wanted to point out specifically about Fatal Push. Uh, the fact that Fatal Push is one of the most played cards right now in Modern. Uh, if we actually look at, if we go to Dex, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. If we go to Dex followed by Format Staples, and we take a look at Modern, you can see uh, Fatal Push is right here, number 7. Uh, in terms of the most played cards in Modern, so people are really going to be wanting this card. It's going to be uh, quite an expensive card. And then also similar to it is Path to Exile. Um, Path to Exile here being the second most played card right now in Modern when we take a look at Path to Exile. This is a card that's maintaining a $7 price tag, um, even though there's some here that are even more than that. The $7 is actually the cheapest one. If we look at the original printing being Conflux, uh, then we're looking at an eight dollar, uh, an eight dollar card. Um, but you can see over here on the right hand side of your screen, it's been printed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus an F and M promo. So it's been printed, uh, and I guess the original Conflux version. So a nine times plus an F and M promo version. 
um, this card has been printed and it's still maintaining an $8 price tag, and I think that's similar to what we could end up seeing uh, with Fatal Push. However, uh, Fatal Push notably, if we take a look at the text on Fatal Push, Fatal Push has a keyword associated with it, being the revolt mechanic, uh, meaning that if Fatal Push was going to be reprinted, there would most likely be other cards in the set that had the revolt mechanic along with it. Fatal Push most likely wouldn't be the the single only revolt card in whatever Modern Masters, whatever year, if they try and pr reprint a Fatal Push, there's most likely going to be other uh, Revolt cards along with it, and if there's not other Revolt cards along with it, then I'm, I don't think we'll see another Fatal Push reprint. Um, I'm sure we will sometime down in the future, but I don't see it coming anytime in the near future. If we look at a card like Lava Spike uh, from Champions of Kamigawa, you can see Lava Spike, uh, one red mana to deal three damage to target player, nice and simple, but again, it has the arcane mechanic that goes along with the Lava Spike, so the only ever time that they reprinted Lava Spike was when it came along with the Modern Masters, uh, the first set, where arcane was actually a mechanic in that set. So other than that, it hasn't been reprinted, so if they wanted to reprint uh, Lava Spike, there would have to be more arcane cards in the set for them to choose to reprint Lava Spike. And again, with Fatal Push, if they choose to reprint Fatal Push, there would have to be other Revolt cards that they would want to reprint along with it. Uh, so because of that kind of hindering its reprintability, uh, I think it could have the potential to, again, increase the price of Fatal Push long term uh, because of how hard it is to actually reprint it. You're not just going to see it uh, reprinted by itself, essentially. Um, in like a Modern Masters set or uh, some some sort of similar set like that. Uh, if we look here at another card, we have Spire of Industry. This is card number five that I have here. These are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, Spire of Industry, you can see $2.60. I think that this card has the potential to be uh, in the future like a $10 card. Um, of course, that seems a little bit far-fetched, but when we go ahead and take a look at it, so first off, it's a rare, uh, and it's seeing play in two modern decks currently, seeing play in Affinity and Lantern Control, and I guess Tesserator as well, so it's seeing play in about three modern decks, Tesserator, Affinity, and Lantern Control. Um, most notably, Affinity and Lantern Control is where it sees the most play. Um, but if we take a look at uh, a deck that I'm thinking about putting together, uh, which is the Martyr of Sands deck, the Mono White Martyr list, um, lands have the potential to just randomly go up over time and just become ridiculously more expensive than they ever should be. Um, and I think a big, a big uh, showcase of uh, this effect comes here with the Mono White Martyr deck, especially because I've been doing a lot of research into this deck, so I know uh, kind of about the lands that are trying to be played in it. And if we take a look at something like Amiria the Sky Ruin, this is the kind of card uh, that, again, similar to Spire of Industry, used to be a rare, uh, and you could pick these up for right here. You can get them for about a dollar. These, This is the Commander 2014 printing. If we take a look at the original Zendikar printing, you could get these closer to like like $2, uh, which is about what... Um, about what Spire of Industry is at right now. Here you can see just under $2 in, uh, in, in this range here. So, and also here, they took another little dip here and they fell back down to about $2 again. But now you can see the card is about $6.47, about six fifty dollars um, for both versions, six fifty for these and about $6 for the Commander 2014 version. So, um, <laughs> these lands just have the ability to go up in price over time. Um, just completely randomly, not the kind of cards that you would really expect to, and I I kind of expect Spire of Industry to. Another, like, super good example of this is Flagstones of Trocare. If we take a look at this, Flagstones of Trocare, right now a $21 card. If we go ahead and take the the slider back here, you can see you used to be able to pick these up for about $3.50, and now they're about $21 a card, and yet another example that we have here in the Modern White Martyr list is Mist Veil Planes. Mist Veil Planes used to be absolute bulk. These things would be about $0.05 cents a piece from your LGS, maybe not even that. Your LGS might even just give these to you. They would be your last pick in draft, uh, and you would be very unhappy about it, and now you can see they're about $5.70 here, and they've just been continuing to go up over time. Uh, so I think lands are really a nice place to invest uh, if you're planning on playing the game long term and you want to kind of accrue some some value over over time. I think Spire of Industry has the potential to be like that. Um, 
and uh, I think I think lands are just really where you want to be in most in most situations. Um, there's some lands like I believe the cycling lands right now from Amonkhet, something like Fetid Pools. Uh, we'll take a look at Fetid Pools really quickly. Uh, so this kind of land here is like six dollars right now, but this is the type of land that I don't see holding value over time. Uh, when we look at all of these deck lists here, it's nothing but standard. There's no eternal formats that are helping it hold its value, and so I believe standard is the only reason that you're going to see fetid pools have any price tag. The fact that it's six dollars is honestly kind of surprising to me uh, at the moment, and I think that once we once we see Amonkhet rotate out of standard, this card is going to become like a two dollar card, maybe. 250 somewhere in that range um, it, it's not going to hold up the six dollar price tag it's just almost impossible uh, but when we look at something like spire of industry again holding up its value because of the fact that it's being played in an eternal format with affinity lantern control and tesserator uh, being modern decks that are seeing that are seeing play uh, with the spire of industry so finally on to the last the last set of cards we have here, so uh, numbers 1 through 5, again, Ramanep, Excavator, uh, Mirage Mirror, Hollow One, uh, this was supposed to be Fatal Push, uh, and then uh, Spire of Industry. Uh, so numbers 6 through 10 are uh, these fast lands, the enemy fast lands from Kaladesh. These are the type of cards that definitely have the chance to go up in value long term. Like I said previously with Spire of Industry, in terms of uh, lands going up in value long term, um, th these are like a perfect example. These unfortunately are the kind of, well I shouldn't even say unfortunately, in, if you're looking solely on financial value, these are the type of cards that uh, will most likely be reprinted. So again, it's not unfortunate, Only it's only unfortunate if you're looking at this as a true investment. If you're looking at this of just like, people should be able to play with magic cards, then it's absolutely fantastic. So um, th these are the type of cards that I could see getting a reprint in the future. Um, but notably, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the entire the entire set here. Uh, if we go to Kaladesh, so the five that I'm talking specifically about are Spire Bluff Canal, uh, Botanical Sanctum, Blooming Marsh, Concealed Courtyard, and finally, inspi oops, this is blue, there we go. And uh, finally, Inspiring Vantage. Those are the five cards that we're looking at here, and you can see in terms of Kaladesh, uh, once we get past Chandra Torch of Defiance, and once we get past Torrential Gearhulk, the next four cards in terms of value are all these fast lands, and then the Inspiring Vantage is relatively low despite the seeing play in the modern burn decks. All of these cards right now are seeing play in, in modern decks right now. Uh, if we look at Spire Bluff Canal, this is seeing play in Storm. If we look at Botanical Sanctum. This is seeing play in. Oops, sorry about that. This is seeing play in the blue-green Merfolk list. If we look at <coughs> Blooming Marsh, this is seeing play in Jund and Abzan, Concealed Courtyard, uh, Black White Tokens and Abzan, and then uh, where was it? Inspiring Vantage, seeing play in Burn. So again, like I said, these are lands that are holding their value long term because of the fact that they're seeing play in eternal formats, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, and if we just take a look at, if you don't, if you don't believe me, if you think that uh, these are going to be similar to fetid pools, the type of lands that will just continue to decrease uh, over time, let's just go ahead and take a look at Blackleaf Cliffs here. Uh, Blackleaf Cliffs ever being printed, only ever being printed once uh, in Scars of Mirrodin. Right now. Same exact thing as these other lands. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer lands. Uh, this one being the black red one. Right now is a $48 card. You can pick these up. Uh, you can pick up the enemy colored ones, the ones from Kaladesh, uh, for about three dollars up to about ten dollars somewhere in those ranges and you can see here around uh this is mirrored and besieged uh, and around scars of mirrored in time these cards were three this uh, black leaf cliffs was about a three dollar card and now it's about 48 dollars uh, so again it has the potential these lands just go up in value over time um and I think I think that the Kaladesh lands will be no different. I, I fully expect them to do the same thing uh, and that they'll end up going up in price over time. So again, really quickly, I'll go through the uh, the 10 cards that I have on my list. Raven App Excavator, Mirage Mirror, Hollow One, Fatal Push, Spire of Industry, Botanical Sanctum, Concealed Courtyard, Inspiring Vantage, Spire Bluff Canal, and Blooming Marsh. Those are the 10 cards that I think uh, that will be rotating out this fall that I believe will hold their value long term. And I I think they're all reasonable uh, speculations and all reasonable choices if you are interested in uh, trying to make a little money or just trying to get yourself some decent cards that you can possibly trade off later uh, for, for some uh, good cards that you know people will want. 
So thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys did enjoy the video, of course, a like would be appreciated, as well as a subscription if this is the first time you're seeing content from me. Um, of course, let me know down below in the comments if I missed out on a card that you think will hold up value uh, past rotation date. Again, the cards that will be rotating will be Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, uh, Amonkhet, and uh, Hour of Devastation. Those will be the four sets that will be rotating out this fall. Um, and again, like I said, let me know down low in the comments if you agree with me, if you disagree, or if you think I missed something, go ahead and let me know. Of course, I love talking about magic, so I'll be more than happy to do so down low in the comment section. Of course, again, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I will see you guys here tomorrow for yet another Magic the Gathering video.